So we're looking at an introduction to the nervous system here. When we're talking about the nervous system, we're talking about these specific functions in the, the integration of body processes. So this is how we're getting our heartbeat, our breathing, our digestion, all of these things to work, not only work, but work together. Hence the integration part. We will sense changes in the environment. Is it hotter? Is it colder? Is there something poking you? We're sensing things that are different. And then we will respond to those changes in the environment. So if it's colder, you might shiver. If it's hotter, you might start to sweat. Things like this. So those are those responses. To do this, we have two key divisions in the nervous system. First of all, we have the central nervous system. This is the part that most people are very aware of, the brain and the spinal cord. And this is considered the control center. This is where all of the decisions are made. How we were talking about you would sense it's cold and then the body would shiver. Well, the decision that it's cold and therefore the body needs to shiver would be made either in the brain or the spinal cord. And I bring that up because there are some decisions that are considered kind of reflexes and the spinal cord makes the decision. It doesn't have to go all the way from the spinal cord up into the brain to make the decision in certain cases. A lot of our reflexes. The other division is the peripheral nervous system. And so these are any of the nerves that are outside of the CNS or central nervous system. Get used to that abbreviation. We use CNS for central nervous system and PNS for peripheral nervous system. So within our peripheral nervous system, we have afferent or sensory nerves, neurons. These will take impulses to the central nervous system so think afferent arrives, A and A. And then we have efferent or motor neurons. These are going to take the impulses from the central nervous system back out. So efferent exits, both E's. Within the motor neurons, we have our somatic neurons. This goes to our voluntary muscles and our autonomic nervous system goes to the involuntary muscles. Within autonomic, we have what I consider the bear walks into the room situation. So sympathetic is our fight or flight. These are stress situations. A bear has walked into the room. What is your body going to do? Parasympathetic is when you're at rest, you're digesting. This is the non-stress situations. So this is your kind of norm. Okay. And then taking this a little further, we go into some of the key cells that we'll be dealing with with the nervous system. We're gonna start with the neuron because it is, of course, the most important. It is the basic structural functional unit of the nervous system. It is our main focus. These are typically fairly large. Some can even get to be about a meter long in the right situations and right locations. They are very, very specialized. That's why they look so different from the previous generalized cells we've learned about. And they will conduct nerve impulses, which we consider electrical excitability. Think of them almost as power lines. They are carrying electricity just like the wires bring electricity. It's just that electrical impulse is generated and functions slightly differently. So when we say they're conducting the impulses, they're going to take them places like the muscles. And the other big thing you have to remember when it comes to the neurons is they have to have a continuous oxygen and glucose supply. So if we cut off breathing, cut off oxygen, we are causing massive damage and can cause the neurons to just flat out stop functioning, which ultimately can lead to death. Um, additionally, we talked about different energy sources earlier, 
And we talked about how that the nervous system was very specific and it only ran on glucose. So it always gets precedence over the glucose because other things can sometimes work with lipids or proteins, things like that, but the neuron must have glucose. So neurons are functioning to transmit information to other body tissues. That's their whole function, their whole point. That, may, that gives us the ability to do functions like movement, perceive our environment. We can think, we have emotions, we learn things. This is all because of this ability for neurons to transmit. The other key cell that we look at is called a neuroglia. And these are going to su support and protect the neurons. So they're all about helping those neurons. And so we have different types of neuroglia based on what they need to do, based on their functions. So some of them insulate. So they may wrap around and help keep that impulse within the neuron for a longer distance. They may play a role in defense, trying to keep the neuron from being attacked. Um, they may help maintain the neuron, do some, some little repair work along the way. Because think about it, even with roads, we have to constantly keep repairing the roads while we've got to keep repairing our neurons. So hopefully this gives you kind of a little intro into some of the key aspects with the nervous system and the neuron in particular, because that's kind of our focus and that's the most important little piece of the entire system.